anyway, continuing. Like, from memory, like it's somewhere fucking around here. And I have passed the casino itself, but it wasn't the casino, it was just like the casino is a landmark. And it was a glowing very, very pink, so I think it just gave my subconscious memory the idea that we were much closer to it than we were. She was kind of sitting against a bollard kind of thing on the corner. That there are these bollardy, I don't know if they're real bollards, but they're bollard shapes. And there was a little bit of bush, and she pointed across the road. I asked her if she slept, and she pointed across the road. And from memory, it was some sort of perhaps a leafy ish area, possibly with some sort of little. entrance or alleyway or something and she was just so on the ground and I felt that she was genuine because she was see it's like over in the corner it's kind of like that but that's not a bollard that's a, a electricity um, I don't know thing wasn't this far because the hospital's over there um, it seemed like a very, very odd place to be trying to get money. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so the reason, and, and this could be total, totally a scam, like this could be the oldest trick in the book, I don't know. But she has what, she had signs on her ticket that could be next to me. Like, I feel like I'm just like boxing here now. <laughs> um, you know, people do. People do get that. Um, my teeth are certainly much in my ears are smoking. Um, and I sort of thought, oh, well, did she put on a cigarette? She didn't ask for this money. She didn't ask for cigarettes. I approached her. I just asked how she was going. And, you know, she had a very cheerful um, uh, demeanour um, and she was not telling sub stories. Um, but I questioned her enough to understand bit by bit that she was extremely cold. She said, oh, I'm okay, I'm really, really layered up. But she was layered in, like, sweatshirts and stuff. And a lot of people, like, I learned a lot from my dad, Ivan, who worked in Antarctica. And they were, this in the 1960s, I just learned about that. So... Yeah, they're working at Scott Base, and I think, you know, like, warmth kind of technology. Um, no, this is not where it is. Warmth technology just keeps, you know, changing and improving. Um, you know, when he started out, I guess in the early 60s, 50s, 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 left school at 14, and he was born in 1940, so... Yeah, I guess the 50s. He showed me some of his old tramping gear and the goggles are fucking hilarious shit. But we got to realise that those prototypes are what we've got on. You know, CF Isaac Asimov's excellent essay that I frequently mentioned, The Relativity of Wrong. Um, it's not like we're going, ha ha, we have decent climbing goggles now. It's like we would not have any climbing goggles if it weren't for the people who initially decided that people didn't want to get um, snow blind. Um, and when they were in Antarctica, I mean, we know what happened to Islands and whatever. I mean, you know, you've got to be prepared for. You've got to be prepared to. Um, uh, just, I 
feel like it's around here. Uh, you gotta be prepared to just make camp immediately. Um, you know, I love that song by, um, on my stupid brain, I was gonna say adult swim. Fuck's sake. Um, you know, she don't like that kind of behavior. It's really cool. Adult swim. Kind of. Um, and, uh, you know, like, oh, is that Scott? And so it's, yeah, like Scott and then the Antarctic base camp too far away. And that to me was just the most chilling line. Because we know what too far away means. And a lot of the mistakes that people have made about keeping warm, you know, keeping hypothermia at bay. Um, and let's not even talk about falling into crevasses or off cliff faces because um, clouds have dropped. Um, a lot of people do not know what they're doing and they layer and layer and layer up. And all they're doing really is um, uh, just um, removing the insulation of properties of their clothing because they're not leaving enough gaps between the, um, the clothing and their skin so they're not warming up enough here. And the trouble with not having any clothing is you're warming up the world but the trouble with very say, tight layers is that you're warming up nothing. Um, because I don't think cotton and elastine and stuff are particularly good heat conductors or, or no, sorry, um, you know what I'm trying to say, I'm distracted, tired, um, and the goal is to really, um, uh, just warm up your own little tent as much as you can, like however you can tent your clothing. And what something that they did is they um, they discovered something fairly revolutionary that um, if you what they did because I was yeah obviously it's Antarctica. Um, you know, one of the coldest places on the planet. Um, I think the only place with the, I think it's the place with the biggest desert. And it's just, I, I think that's here, I think that's here there. Well, I think that's where it was. I think that's where she was. If it's not her, it's bloody well someone who's going to get my stuff. Um, but I'll just stop for a sec. Um, Um, yeah, they would wear gloves under mittens to double up in the heat. And then they found out that mittens alone kept their hands warm, whereas doubling up with gloves and mittens didn't. And possibly gloves are warmer than the double up as well, but you don't want something that's tight around your fingers, you want something that your fingers could be in a pocket of heat that they heat up because you're using your own body temperature. There is no heat intrinsic in these items of clothing. And I just feel like there really needs to be a lot more education for people on the street about how to pad the ground underneath them, how to create insulation around them. Anyway, let's just see if it's there, I don't know. But if it's not here, like I didn't make my way here, I'm just going to get rid of the stuff because I've got to move out of this hostel tonight and um, I'm not counting this shit back. I am walking all over Christchurch chasing home those people that I've said I'd come back and then I've just got lost. Okay, but I keep it running just in case. Quite angry with me 
with me the other day. Oh no, fuck, I just hate bitches that fucking hang around and don't fucking kiss you because... I'm not into kissing people, I'm into trying to... Sorry about that. You were, you were, we, 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 we were literally just talking on the street. Yeah. Um, I was actually looking for the... Um, I'm sort of like wandering around Christchurch because I'm trying to find people that I said I'd come back and see and then I keep getting lost and missing them. And I think there was a chick who was here and she's not here but you are and I can't believe you're laughing because I'm so close to her. Yeah, good. Um, well, I'll show you. I mean, they may be a little bit homemade with her and everything now, but... Oh, are they really good? Yeah, I've got all my clothes. Yeah, I don't want to close away. Okay. I don't want to close away. Would you like some food? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd just like you to be a bit nicer to me, so I'm going to go I don't want that shit, go away. I am fucking gonna go away. I thought you were just having a bad day the other day. But you're actually really unbelievable. I have tried to help you and you need the things that I have. And all you I, I do is whine, 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 whine about how no one will fucking help you. Okay. And you don't give a shit about Fuck me off. being over. Fuck off the screen, bro. Yeah, fucking leave. Okay. Hurry up on a plane, cuz. A public place. Hurry up. Get are, out of my face. We are in a public place. Yeah, get out I'm, of my face. You're my spot. And I'm trying to help you. Bro, I've got five fucking meters of respect, cuz. Now, fuck off. There is no respect in your body at all. Bro. There's no Did respect. Did I fucking tell you to stop? You were complaining about how no one's going to help you, and I'm fucking trying to help you. I'm not fucking complaining, you fucking rat. Now, fuck off. You're a really, really unpleasant person. Go away! Yeah, go away! Yeah, I am gonna go away. Okay. Let's just, um, say that's not here. He probably has paranoid schizophrenia, I would, I would say, I would say, um, and I have, a, I have sympathy, 
um, because that sucks. I didn't expect that's probably what it is. Uh, he's probably not ungrateful. He's probably just really, really suspicious. And it's probably a mental illness and he probably needs needs. And I met another guy like that on the street the other day and he was not that bad but he was fucking pretty similar and he was sleeping on like Litchfield Street or something and I just started to ask him if he wanted anything because I've been going around specifically with stuff that I bought from like City Mission Up Shop and stuff like I can't afford fucking anything either and um I can't afford to live in the after tonight. But I'm in more trouble and in more devastated I am by other people in my position and I just want to like I just want to help where I can. Yeah. I don't even care when they are assholes. Like I have met a couple of people, obviously not like that, but the guy on the street the other day. Because what I did is I got a bunch of things, some fresh choice, which was like an expensive way to go about things. But I couldn't watch the supermarket. Because I'm just so working every day, just to survive. And I just bought little things with like a dollar or a two dollars or two fifty bag. Just like little, you know, snacky things as um, high in nutrients and stuff as I can because they quite often don't, you know, people will give you things that they might necessarily know what your diet's been like and you can end up getting really nutrient deficient and I don't know what people I can't, I can't go and you know when I started trying to help people when I was in emergency housing in Papua and I you know connected with scooter I used to call Skeeter because I don't I wanted to um, preserve his privacy. But you know, like I taught him and that's how I found out that it's a really good idea to ask what people need before giving them things. And it's not about looking a gift horse in the mouth and they don't generally they will usually accept things because they don't want to appear ungrateful. And there will be a little community where they will share things around if they if they can't use them themselves and that's how I ended up getting like bread rolls and apples from this guy who had no teeth and his upper jaw. You know, and Skoda would say I will take anything that you've got because I'd say look I don't want to give you something that you don't want because it's just small stuff for you to like lug around when you don't have a home base. He had a car that he would go and like park somewhere and I think he had a bike or something he'd come in and anyway people would steal away and they stole this gas cocker and stuff and it's like you know the more stuff you have it's like you can't just take it through flight because you've got to carry it around and secondly it can be a liability. Anyway I first offered him a banana and he said you know, he was just really bright and, um, I don't, I don't think that intellect, I'm not saying here or there, but he, um, you know, he would just have a very bright demeanour, like this, I mean, very different personality from this young woman I'm looking for and I failed to find and I've given up now. But, um, you know, they don't show any negativity and 
well, I end up talking to him over a long period of time, you know, because I'd go to the supermarket quite frequently. Because that's where he was until he was trespassed by the security guards, which was fair enough. But, like, fuck man, there but, there but the grace of God go, go us all and I'm going there now too. I'm going to go this way, I think. I think this is my day straight. Um, and he said, Look, I will. T he said, Just give me everything you've got, it's fine. And anything that I can't use, I will make sure I pass on to someone else because there's a community. And it was amazing to me how many men that I had met and spoken to knew each other. And they were in different areas. Like there was one really brave guy taking on Mary Vale. <laughs> and again, he wouldn't ask for anything. He would just sit on the pavement and draw chalk drawings. And he approached me just to just observe that I looked a bit down which I was and, you know you just get these lovely people you know um, um, but it's it's really um, it's really hard and, and I really try not to I was really harsh to that guy but I've actually just had um, nasty experiences with him in Addington and that's why I filmed him, like, because I think he deserved that. I don't know. I don't know if he did or not. But you could hear that, I hope. You could hear him say, no one gives a f Do you know why I don't give a shit you're homeless? Because no one gives a shit that I'm homeless. No one's trying to help me. And I'm like, I'm literally standing in front of you trying to help you. And to say that he doesn't care that I'm homeless and I got hypothermia, like he said that to me the other day, so I don't give a fuck about you. And it doesn't really bother me. But the first time we interacted, just on the street of it, you know, like yeah, this, the street in Addington, you know, when I was staying at the jailhouse. And I'd be up and down the road quite a bit because my storage unit's nearby and the, you know, the shops would be there and I went to the pub um, a couple of times. Um, and um, um, I'd just see him at night time and I'd often be looking for this other guy, this other young, young guy who was a noob, he just had nothing. and I. He kept disappearing and I was trying to give him stuff and I think a lot of them are mentally ill. Um, and I guess a lot of people assume the same of me. And that, that mental illness, people can, people can do the bait and switch or the, you know, the double meaning thing. And, you know, then, you know, backtrack and say, oh, this is what I meant by mental illness. But it's like, no, PTSD and clinical stress, that's not what you mean by mental illness. That's not a mentally ill person. We're not talking about the denotation, because the denotation, the strict dictionary meaning, is not what we're talking about. And it's not the, it's not the relevant fa fact. But when we're talking about mental illness, in these contexts, we're talking about people who clearly have delusions of persecution, but there's also just so nasty. And we were kind of like, I used to run into him a few times, I ran into him about three times in the street. If his time was good, and he was, we were talking to the young guy that I was trying to help, and I think just, you know, we just seem to have that sense of community, sort of unspoken community spirit kind of going on, because it's a sub community of us, right? And, uh, then, um, 
the second time I met him he I can't remember but it just wasn't very nice and then the third time it went very much like that where I just I just asked him what he needed because I have quite a lot of stuff that I could have got him my storage you know because I have stocked up for these reasons and it's something of death like I'm not bringing him women's clothes like what a fucking cock man like you know let's just say he doesn't have a mental illness and that's his personality like that's a cock thing to say and he needed like he needed food and so what happened the other day with this guy on Richfield Street or whatever it was I don't like to wake people up on the street, but when I, I just got a bit closer and I saw his eyes were open, it's just like, what are you going to do? Like, it's fucking freezing cold, you're just going to get under your filthy rug, right? And I said, um, hi, do you need any stuff? And he said he did, like he was freezing and he was hungry. And then he started going on about... Just ranting, just ranting, ranting, like he was proper mad like he was proper crazy and I don't mean that in a derogatory term because that's what mental that's what people mean by um uh, men, you know mental health they don't mean people with PTSD and clinical stress like me they mean proper bonkers schizophrenic you know um, that's what I mean, so I'm not being derogatory at all, I'm just clarifying what people won't fucking commit to saying, because if they commit to saying it, then they can't pretend that I'm mentally ill. He was just renting, like, he was renting like, uh, 80% was just gibberish. And I think it was slightly political, but he wasn't like a political ranter, it was just like, you know, just totally like, oh, fuck off, and, and he really did want food, you could see that it was a really big deal for him to say no, um, but he said, oh, fuck yeah, I want any fucking thing, and I just said, I'm not taking this from you, and I walked off. I stomped off <laughs> towards like Cashel Street and I'm like oh, fuck it like the right thing to do is respond to the need not the fucking piece of shit bedside manner right so I just like stomped, I think my suitcase where it was, I mean I can't that around in a fucking big fucking tote bag. And I just got a few things out of my bag and I just went bag. And I there was like a warm like well I say warm like a very like I've chosen the clothing quite carefully. It's like quite a well insulated, you know like kind of one of those like winter vest sort of things and um, I just in my suitcase I picked up one of those jackets and I picked up some food and I just went back and I just fucking threw them all at his fucking head and then stomped off again because whatever his fucking deal is his cold and starving and for all I know with if, if the abuse of me keeps continuing maybe I'm going to be like that but that little shit little hippie fucking shit he's been to Bali and he had to you know, fucking mushroom teas on the beach um you hear what he said, he's like, yeah, I can't be fucked with fucking wars or whatever, like, you know, who talks to you but won't kiss you or something, and I'm like, what? Well, we didn't even have that kind of interaction. But he said the same thing to me the other day, like, 
Oh, fuck off, you fucking prostitute. Well, no. Prostitute? Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. So, um, the reason I felt quite justified in uh, pushing it back then was because he's been disgusting to me. Um, he's been disgusting but I hate mean, everybody who tries to help him and the idea that for some reason because I spoke to him about drinking down this other home last night I somehow in a cock cheats like I don't care how fucking crazy you are that's not that's just not I know autistic people can get in trouble with sexual boundaries, even commit rapes, because sexual interactions are much more subtle and nuanced than feminists like to think, um, and it's a social interaction. Sex, sex is a social interaction. And that courtship kind of thing, that whole thing is a social interaction. But he didn't think it's not how he was like. It's not what he was saying. He was saying because I talked to him and I furiously think because I didn't fucking follow it very well. Putting that guy on YouTube. It's not very nice, but I just would really like anybody to not fucking ever approach him. I think he's liable to be extremely aggressive. He was being a fucking dickwad in Sydenham, no, Sydenham, Eddington. Um, it was one of those encounters where he was just being a fucking cock to a few of us who were congregated for the purposes of I guess my sort of purpose, general purpose here. And then there was one guy, this sort of normal looking white guy, and he was like, is this guy giving you shit? And I'm like, yeah, he's being a fucking cunt. And this guy goes right, and he goes like stomping after this guy. So I think he's absolutely notorious. And I think that, um, I think that a bit of white knighting actually was a uh, call for. He's a little guy. He's probably not much taller than I am. I'm 5'4". He's probably like 5'5". Five five. But he's a guy, and he's local and very angry and very self-entitled and it sounds like he just goes around being a fucking cunt to people and um, I've been told by lots of people quite a few men you are very vulnerable out here at night with your suitcase you should know that and the thing is that I don't feel that I am, but I have to realise that Christchurch is all different to Wellington and it makes me look like a fucking tourist. And, um, you know, I've, I've had experiences in Christchurch where people have attacked my body. So that's two cops, and that's Mitchell, and that's uh, um, Don Campbell, Lauren's henchman, I think he's her boyfriend. Um, yeah, I've had enough of that happening. I think I can. Uh, well, you know that. Fucking gang trick. 
who is 5'9 and 5'4 um, and I'm 50 kilos so I lost so much weight and she would have been like I'd say 75 kilos like just a voluptuous beautiful wahine um, and a scrapper and the only reason like her aim was pretty fucking good, but she was wasted drunk. But she would have knocked me out, she would have broken my fucking jaw. And then again, skinny little white chick fucking going for me, and she's one of those like, I, I'm just, I just can't believe how many times people have fucking assaulted me and tried to assault me in Christchurch. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna post that, and I. I think I'm probably going to mention it to City Mission because I probably know of him and like I think he needs to be in Helmorton I really do um, I would not say that of many people because Helmorton is a disgusting disgusting place but that's exactly where someone like him needs to be um, if not even in forensics you know Anyway, I'm just going to try and get through some stuff before I go back.